Hello everyone and welcome to this video which is in our Great Engine Middle Game series. I'm Grandmaster Matthew Sadler and we're taking a look today at a very interesting strategical game between Minich and Halogen played in the TCEC Season 22 League 2. Um, this position interested me greatly when I saw it and I was transfixed until the end which was uh, fairly long. Um, after Black's last move which was uh, C5 to C4 um, I considered white to have a very serious advantage. I mean, the reason for that is that um, c4, it's, uh, well, release some of black's pressure against the b4 and the d4 pawns. And it actually gives white uh, the opportunity to play all over the board. Um, we could imagine a move like a4, um, and then, uh, you know, white's going to double on the uh, on the a file with both rooks and try and invade in there, just like the, uh, the classic games, Karpov against Unzika, from 1974, I think, and uh, and uh, the first game of the uh, the Fischer Spassky match in 1992. Um, with the exchange of dark squared bishops, the black dark squares are weakened. So actually, a central plan um, involving playing d takes e5 and then in invading on d6 is also uh, um, well a, a very interesting idea. And then, of course, you know the weakness of the dark squares. Um, is also true on the king side uh, now that black's played g6 so white has got you know various ideas you know h4 to h5 is one and uh, well the f4 break is very typical in um, in Lopez structures that again cropped up in this uh, famous carp of Unzika game so uh, in general you know white can play all over the place but um, but it is very hard of course to play in three areas at once so I think uh, you know the typical human approach would be to um, uh, to close one channel and then play uh, on two out of three channels and um, certainly you know influenced by the classic games I think I'd be thinking about blocking the center with d4 to d5 playing on the queen side on the a file trying to get some sort of advantage there and then once I've got black a little bit tied up there to uh, to try and play on the king side with f4 that would be my uh, my natural intuitive way of um, of thinking about it again heavily influenced by those classic games um now what we're going to see in the uh, game is that minich actually closes two of the three channels it's going to close the queen side and the center and focus on the king side and um you know in general yeah you know in the old days maybe uh, three four years ago i'd have just said ah you know no engine conception of strategy but uh, well you know nowadays uh, um yeah you've got to take it seriously what uh, what engines do at, at the strategical level and uh, yeah i tend to uh, to be just a little bit more cautious in what i think um uh, you know what's definitely clear you know i, I do think that um, that keeping uh, two entry channels open is the best uh, way of playing it but uh, what you're going to see in the uh, in the game is how serious white threats are even when the the pressure is all on one channel on the king side and uh, yeah you know i think that's certainly a revelation to me about how much danger there was there um i think in general you know when you let stockfish uh, in particular play it's trying to keep two channels open and it's switching from side to side obviously you need quite a bit of calculation to uh, to do that because um uh yeah i mean you've always got to watch out for black breaks like a5 or d5 even you know the the, the more uh, tension you keep in the position yeah the, the more uh, you have to calculate um i think you know leela is also quite uh, flexible but uh, I, I was seeing more often in leela's uh, pv you know the the uh, the decision to close stuff just like minich did play a4 to a5 d4 to d5 and then play on the king's side so now yeah, you know you've got to and you've got to give you know have some trust in uh, in leela as well in this so it's you know obviously a very dangerous plan so um uh, now Minich played a, a round for a few moves and then uh, went for its uh, uh, decision. Just going to take um, a little bit of a, of a tour from time to time of uh, things that happened in some of my engine games. Uh, I ran matches between Stockfish and Coivisto, 7.13, uh, Stockfish and uh, Berserk, 9dev, um, and also a few games between uh, Leela and... Uh, um, and uh and stockfish so um yeah got a, a nice little um uh little uh yeah uh scala of uh, of things there i'll just say in general that uh stockfish was just uh awesome <laughs> and uh you know barely losing any games as black and virtually winning every single game as white just not normal this engine so um a4 was um uh, was one of stockfish's choices here which is very natural and then one very interesting thing a5 that was coivisto's uh, reaction 
I think it's just uh, maybe a little bit too early, but it's definitely, you know, showing, uh, yeah, the sort of thing that White's got to be calculating all the time, you know. So, uh, yeah, this was uh, the uh, Stockfish uh, Koi Visto game. Uh, Koi Visto just um, uh, swapping off all the rooks, sacrificing a pawn, attacking the pawn on e4. We get d5, queen a1, and then queen a7, hitting uh, the pawn on f2 here. Um, queen e3, queen b6, and, uh, you know, Koi Visto managed to get back the b5 pawn. But now the c4 pawn is weak, and uh, well, this was a beautiful demonstration of end game play from um, uh, from uh, from Stockfish, which um, which got it the win. It's a nice position. I mean, just long term, this pawn on c4 is difficult to defend, right? I mean, even moves like f3, knight f1 to e3, uh, bishop b1 to a2, or uh, bishop d1 to e2, for example. You know, all uh, all possible. Very hard to to hold that c4 pawn. Uh, but that was quite uh, that was quite interesting. Another uh, game this time with uh, Stockfish as um, uh, as Black was quite interesting because, uh, um, yeah, I mean uh, uh, this was uh, Coivisto as White and uh, Coivisto keeping the tension, you know, just uh, playing around, seeing what um, what happens, and then finally decides to close the centre um, and uh, uh, strike in the on the king side. And then close the uh, the queen side. You know, again, very, very, very typical this. And again, I was seeing this with uh, with Leela quite a lot. Once a decision's been taken, close the centre, attack on the king side. Then Coivisto, often Leela, were closing the uh, the queen side. I guess just to be rid of any you know potential counterplay there. What was very interesting about this uh, was that, um, uh, I mean, um, my engines were, were, were very often taking on f4 in order to get uh, the e5 square for the knight, but uh, Stockfish was um, was just sort of waiting like this and, uh, you know, leaving the position like this. And, uh, well, you know, this sort of structure just uh, managed to hold all the time. Notice this plan h5 to h4. We'll uh, be talking about this sort of stuff an awful lot but um yeah i mean uh, stockfish managed to uh, to hold this position it's a bit uncomfortable but it's not uh, so bad for uh, for black so um yeah i mean that was quite uh, that was quite interesting um so um but um Minich played rook e d1 queen f8 queen e3 rook d8 Again, uh, Stockfish here was uh, playing a5, you know, just like Coivisto did earlier, you know, not waiting for, uh, for um, you know, for White to do stuff, but also taking some action as well. And I think, you know, this is one of the hallmarks of these uh, really strong engines. I mean, obviously, Stockfish is one, Coivisto is also, uh, you know, Premier Division class as well. And they don't just wait for you uh, to do stuff. If there's an opportunity there, then they take it. And, uh, well, what you notice here, uh, what uh, Stockfish managed to do was uh, to create confusion and targets in the white position. I mean, the C pawn, the D pawn, they're really, really weak. You know, Black's going to lose something. But um, uh, just in the, uh, um, whilst this is happening, then we're going to get some counterplay. And of course, you know, there's, you know, plenty of uh, of amazing tactics here. I mean, you know, black is a pawn down, but this pawn's pretty difficult to uh, to advance. And uh, yeah, against Berserk, Stockfish managed to uh, to hold this. Now, it's quite, you know, difficult to uh, um, to understand this sort of play, but, um, but well, the idea behind it is uh, is clear. And, uh, you know, the, uh, the idea that you don't sit still. I mean, what you can say about uh, Halo's play in general is that um, it was quite passive. You know, it was really, um, really waiting for stuff to happen. And, uh, well, you just notice with the, uh, with the top engines that, uh, that, you know, that doesn't quite happen. So, um, you know, Leela um, uh, here in this position with white um, starts off, um, uh, you know, wanting to actually keep everything fluid and, uh, and even invade on the, uh, on the D file. Um, it was giving um, an expected score of 66.4%, which is uh, advantage for white, but nothing, uh, nothing clear. Um, and if we look at how uh, uh, Stockfish played, um, played these positions, um, let's get some uh, some little a little example here. Um, yeah, this why not? Queen d2, King g8, Rook e1, Knight e8, Knight h2, um, Knight c7, and then it played d5. Uh, this quite good timing actually, because this knight was coming round to e6 to f4. So you know it's got another reason as well there. Rook db8, Rook f1. So uh, Stockfish keeping this uh, queen side open. A5, Knight g4. 
and um, well, that's probably uh, you know something to do with uh, with the point of uh, let's just keep on going with the uh, with the old attack here, especially because Black's moved uh, a knight round to c7. A takes takes bishop a6. Now it goes a5. Um, actually, this has worked out beautifully for White. Not only have you blocked the queen side now, but you've also got a passed a pawn. Rook f8, f4 takes rook takes, and uh, yeah, obviously this was very very dangerous for uh, for Black. And you're really missing, you know, the knight that you had defending before. It's on c7 now. But um, but yeah, you know that was sort of uh, you know typical uh, stockfish play. Minich played uh, d5 straight away, just blocking that queen side. Rook b8. Um, rook f1, bishop c8, so uh, um, yeah, halo just sort of uh, waiting around really, you know, just sort of uh, organizing itself like that. Um, and now um, Minich played f4. Um, yeah, I mean Stockfish was, uh, was playing the move uh, um, knight e2. But with uh, similar ideas, just to uh, uh, to threaten f4. For example, if you go bishop b7 and f4, rook f8, Coivisto trying not to uh, uh, to give uh, anything away, keep it centre. But somehow, uh, yeah, you know, it's just stockfish, right? G4, g5, in we go, um, and it was all going too quickly. So knight h5 was another line that um, uh, Berserk played with uh, with Black. But here we see, uh, you know, stockfish playing rook a1 here. Just uh, playing on the queen side and now playing f4. This is, uh, I think you'd say, very typical human uh, strategy. Playing, uh, blocking the centre and then playing on uh, on the extremes of both wings here. Um, and then switching back. Rook a3, just uh, protecting the pawn on c3. Keeping a rook. Oops, not queen takes c3. Keeping uh, um, um, uh, a rook on the a-file but protecting c3. Queen e7, knight e2, queen e3. Rook f a1, you know, going back again, knight comes into d4, always a big advantage when uh, when that pawn on e5 is given. Um, and then takes, takes, knight f3. And uh, yeah, I mean, very important in this position that white hasn't uh, blocked the, uh, the a file. I mean, with a pawn on a5, these positions are kind of holdable for black, but with the threat of going a, b and bishop a4 and then targeting the a6 pawn, yeah, these positions are very difficult for black. A lot of weak dark squares a lot of loose stuff in the position so uh yeah i mean this was how the game proceeded just to show you bishop a4 takes takes and then uh, coivisto started uh, uh or uh, rather berserk started trying to um uh, to get rid of stuff but yeah this was just really really awkward for uh for black and uh yeah i mean stockfish ended up uh, lining up on the seventh grabbing this pawn and uh, and winning so again i, I thought this was a very nice uh, exposition of uh you know, what I think is uh, is ideal strategy there, you know, just uh, um, uh, playing on, on both wings and then switching from side to side, exploiting the fact that you've got, you know, more space and uh, um, and uh, it's just a little bit easier for, for you to get, uh, you know, from the F file to the A file to the F file back again. Um, F4 was played by, uh, by Minich, E takes F4, Queen takes F4, but after knight E5, it played A5, which, yeah, you know, to me feels uh, just um, a little bit uh, dubious. Again, um, Stockfish was playing uh, knight E2, you know, and uh, again, going for that flexibility on both sides, really impressed with, uh, with Stockfish's strategy, by the way. This is uh, Stockfish from the 17th of February, the big mysterious 15 ELO gainer at long time controls. Um, and uh, well, uh, who knows? It was very strong before, but it's uh, yeah, really strong now. But you know, this plan ninety two again playing on the A file and on the F file, and this was uh, you know very successful against Quivisto and also against uh, Berserk as well. Um, but A five played, and this was the moment that you know it shocked me, and it also interested me. You know, just um, uh, does White have enough just with the king side play and the F file? Or, um, yeah, is White giving away most of its advantage? Um, yeah, I think, you know, basically White is giving away some advantage by doing that. But it's, yeah, a lot more dangerous than you'd think. Um, so, yeah, very important for Black, you know, to get F6 in to, uh, to sort of uh, stop a, a White piece from getting into F6 because then D6 would be weak. Um, in principle, <coughs> at, at any stage here, uh, Black would be quite happy to swap off a pair of knights. And funnily enough, if we swap off a pair of knights, if, for example, these two get exchanged, then we're actually in a position that I've actually played against Leela in a training game, which I drew as Black. 
So uh, that's actually quite um, quite funny. The um, the extra pieces uh, for white, uh, the extra knights are quite important. They stop breaks like f5. They aim for the e6, c6 squares. Uh, white simply gets more attacking chances. I mean, sat you're going to see sacrifices with knight f5 are uh, are possible as well uh, at certain moments. So um, yeah, I mean, and it's also the you know the standard human uh, rule of thumb that if the opponent's cramped, you don't want to exchange off pieces. So a lot of shuffling uh, taking place here. Um, and um, very interesting here to you know run multiple games with uh, Stockfish defending as black and just see you know what is Stockfish doing and uh, well this was one uh, interesting uh, game which I wanted to show you um, you know don't worry about the absolute specific lines but just think about the moments that I point out from time to time and this is this move knight h5 it's a really interesting idea from uh, Stockfish what's the idea the idea is that knight h5, gh5, well, we swap off our pair of knights, of course, but um, we actually get some activity, right? Because, uh, you know, the g file is opened and this pawn on h5 is doubled, OK, but it does hold back an advanced g4 from white, which we'll see is really important in the future. And of course, you know, swapping off the knights, um, that makes it harder. That, white loses a bit of control. And for example, you're getting this um, this e5 square for the knight and also for the queen as well. Queen e5. Um, and, but what's really interesting about this is that, you know, one of the normal human rules of thumb for defending uh, positions is that you don't move the pawns on the area where you're weakest. So in general, what you'd be saying is, yeah, keep those pawns where they are. Don't move them at all. This uh, f6, g6, h7 pawns. Um, and just stay where you are. And that's actually what Halo does throughout the game. But if you look at how Leela defends it, how um, uh, Stockfish defends it, and also how Berserk defends it, and Berserk was, was really uh, uh, defending this pretty well, was making a number of draws as, uh, as black. Um, 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 those engines are always opportunistically uh, taking the chance to adjust the kingside pawn structure. You know, maybe play the, uh, the pawns to h4 and g5, you know, get some sort of blockade at a higher point somehow, you know, take some squares away from the white pieces. And um, yeah, I found this very striking, you know, because it's really uh, uh, the, the, the normal human rule of thumb is uh, don't do that. But yeah, that's what Halo did. And uh, that's how Halo ended up in trouble. So we get plenty of, uh, of, um, of shuffling here, you know, no... Uh, no worries here you know that's um uh, uh one of these one of these opportunistic uh, uh moments came up where uh berserk was uh was kind of uh, shuffling a little bit and then h5 comes in queen e7 berserk trying to shuffle its king across and h4 here and after knight f5 very important move taking with bishop here leaving uh, the knight to defend and then there we are this was uh this was more or less Stockfish's defensive structure, which it stayed at for the rest of the, for the rest of uh, of its life, basically, and it's a very tough one to break. I mean, um, uh, you know, you can think of lots of different sacrifices from white against the black structure, but if you cover those points, you know, you, you just never get through. Uh, we've got the rook to cover the h file as well, in case there's an, uh, an in invasion attempt. And actually, there's really very little that uh, that White can do in this position. Position looks great, and I think you know the engines are still at plus two or whatever. But there's just no way that you can get through. And uh, yeah, Stockfish was very, very good at uh, you know at uh, finding these uh, these sort of structures. So, um, but here, you know, Halo is um, is uh, is waiting. Knight f3. I would definitely take that one off. I can tell you. Um, but uh, um, yeah, Halo just uh, stayed still and uh, the chance was lost to exchange. All these sort of moves, lots of shuffling. Yeah, the one downside to uh, computer chess, you know, it's uh, again, I would I'm, I'm pretty sure I would have taken that uh, that night if uh, if it was at all possible. Um, but OK, you know, the time runs down and then it starts getting exciting. Um, bishop c2 and uh, well here I just let my uh, my engines just have a look at it so you know what you what are you thinking and uh, here again we see stockfish you know just uh, opportunistically taking an opportunity whoop g5 the queen's actually in a tiny little bit of trouble here so uh, um, you know stockfish just um, uh, takes that opportunity knight g3 knight g5 again swapping the bishop off for that one knight c7 and we're in our structure again you know it's uh, uh, again, very hard for uh, for white to break through. 
But, uh, you know, you could just see it. You know, any time you basically ask stockfish, what are you going to do? You just saw this reaction immediately, not um, waiting for your fate to uh, to arise, but really just um, uh, reacting. And, uh, you know, this was um, really keeping the evaluation somewhere around uh, 0 0.6, 0 0.7 for stockfish, which is well within draw drawing range, you know. Knight G2 here, and here is where it starts getting very interesting now. And, um, you know, White's idea actually is to play G4 here, G4 and Knight G3. Uh, that's one first stage, you know, the first stage to getting some sort of, can I do that? Getting some sort of clamp on the black position. Um, yeah, not quite clear how you proceed after that, but that's for future uh, thought. The first thing is, you know, you're going to be able need to make a pawn break sometime, maybe even play g5, maybe h4 to h5, who knows, maybe sacrifice a knight on f5. But uh, yeah, you need to get a pawn on g4. And here straight away, you know, stockfish, koi vistal, um, uh, berserk, all coming in with h5, whack, knight f4, h4, you know, and... Uh, uh, king g1, king h7, king bishop d1, g5. This is uh, stockfish against berserk, you know, and uh, well, berserk holds the draw here, you know, just uh, it was uh, all quite um, thrilling, but uh, yeah, takes takes, queen a7, queen d7. Stockfish didn't want to give up the knight for the rook, that knight's great, but it just found no way through here. Um, so, you know, you really see that again, but uh, again, Halo just uh, waiting, you know, that's not uh, bad, bad. It's only a, a, a few, um, uh, uh, um, a few centi pawns, but, uh, you know, just from my point of view, you know, th th it's a plan, right? I mean, you know, that's, uh, whereas, uh, you know, here you're just not making any progress after G4, you've got some thoughts about more progress. Again, I'd be, I'd be looking to swap off a pair of knights here, but um, uh, Halo didn't do that. Knight g7, um, and very interesting position here. I mean, I ran a number of games uh, between uh, um, Stockfish and uh, Leela from this position, and uh, quite interesting here. You know, rook g2 uh, played, and now um, what um, what Stockfish wanted was rook e8, rook f1, and then g5 here. You know, this was really what, uh, what Stockfish wanted. It played like this against Leela and against Berserk. And the idea is simply, that um, um, you're going to play um, h5 here, knight g6, and you're coming into f4, you know, and uh, this was, uh, yeah, I mean, this just turned out to, uh, again, you know, be good enough for black. Um, again, stockfish, uh, this is a berserk against stockfish. Berserk tried giving up the exchange, but uh, yeah, stockfish sets this up and then just uh, will hold forever. Um, I tried to get uh, Berserk to uh, sacrifice <laughs> sacrifice uh, a knight somehow and try and break through, but uh, yeah, I mean it's just not really uh, it's just not really possible. Black's always got enough uh, defensive resources there. So again, you know, we got this, and uh, yeah, H5 was Leela's move. Funnily enough, that's really sharp. I mean, it's apparently quite a decent move, but. Um, you know, looking at that sort of uh, opening up the king tactics and all that, I did think that Leela might uh, lose this game, and it certainly did in the end. Uh, knight e5, fe, knight f5 was uh, Stockfish's move, and uh, well, it just powered in really. Queen a7, king h8, queen a6. It's a very uh, unpleasant uh, idea for black. I mean, this rook doubling is uh, really tying down all black's pieces. Uh, meanwhile, White's just taking an a pawn and going to queen it. And um, well, this was the normal, the normal disaster for uh, for Leela. Um, uh, yeah, when Stockfish played h5, actually, uh, when I made Stockfish play h5, it did a, a much better job of uh, of defending there. Actually, so after Knight takes c5, it took with a pawn. When King h7, uh, Rook h8, King g8, and somehow, somehow managed to curl up in a ball and uh, and hold it all together. But, you know, still very uh, quite unpleasant. But again, you're seeing that, uh, you know, the, the best engines, not just waiting, but really opportunistically, you know, it's really based on uh, on concrete tactics all the time, trying to change the pawn structure, not give white um, a free uh, a free hand. And, um, you know, what is actually white's free hand? What what is white actually going to do? How is white going to uh, to um, to get its position good? Well, um, we didn't get the answer straight away from Minich, but it did find some very, very good regroupings. So this knight on g3 is excellent. It stops both f5 and h5. 
So um, we're really clamping down here now. And then, um, I was, you know, how are you going to be able to do something? Well, I guess that what you want, um, either you've got this typical sacrifice with knight f5 that we've already seen in, uh, in this uh, uh, stockfish Leela game, where you just aim to, uh, to open up the G file with a, with, a, with a peace sacrifice, you know, which is, uh, which is cool. Or you might want to, you know, advance the pawn somehow, the kingside pawns. But if you want to advance the kingside pawns, then um, yeah, obviously this this king on h1, little bit dodgy. You know, it's uh, it could easily get caught up in some tactics. So Minich makes the plan. I mean, we're seeing so many of these, and this is really deep strategy, Petrojan strategy. You know, but we're seeing so many of them uh, now from the engine. So Minich decides that this king is going to have to go over to the queen side, and um, uh, it is very interesting. You know, to see um, what actually happens there. So rook c8. Queen h6, rook cf8, rook f2, knight e8, halo, you know, still waiting, still waiting all the time. Again, you know, my engines, uh, uh, stockfish and, uh, uh, well, stockfish in particular, you know, always trying to evict that queen on h h6, get some, some change in the kingside pawn structure. But um, uh, king g2, bishop c8, king f1, and now a really crucial uh, moment here because um, uh, the white king is crossing to the queen side. And once the king is on the queen side, then Stockfish's evaluation jumps another, uh, another, uh, another pawn. You know, really, it, uh, it really sees that as a very big achievement. Um, so actually, you know, the key defense at this point was to play knight c7, um, simply with the idea that if king e1, we can go knight takes d5, and e takes d5 allows knight g4. Um, you know, so this was really, you know, a very crucial moment to keep it to a, a plus 1.5 advantage to white. Um, but again, you know, Halo misses that moment and the king comes over. And now it's really, really serious. I mean, only Stockfish was still managing to hold some of the games against uh, uh, Berserk and uh, Coivisto. But um, uh, yeah, you know, there were also a lot of, um, a lot of losses uh, in there as well. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think this position is just really, really difficult. Um, so knight, knight f1 played by uh, Minich, which is a nice regrouping. I like this very much. This knight on e3 still clamping down on f5, uh, but protecting the pawn on, uh, on g4, which makes um, uh, h3 to h4 more, uh, more possible. Queen d8, rook e2, rook e7, rook e1. We've got some, uh, some slightly uh, aimless shuffling, but, you know, this is from a position of strength for white. h4 coming in. Queen f4, and now we have to decide, you know, how are we going to do this? The king um, obviously moves away. And here this was um, a little bit unfortunate for Halo. I mean, both engines were, were very, very short of time. Um, and, uh, you know, it played um, uh, the move um, uh, h6 here, which really gave white um, a, um, uh, a little bit of a hook to latch on to. Um, wasn't you know like totally clear that um, uh, that the engines were uh, the, you know that white was hundred uh, percent absolutely winning, but it must be said that uh, Stockfish managed this um, pretty well. It has to be said. So for example, um, knight e eight, king b two, rook e seven, and then this amazing idea, which I'm really not sure about. It's uh, actually the uh, neck plus ultra of. Uh, blocking the position because there's no uh, pawn break now anymore um, but black's pieces are incredibly tied up and uh, um, yeah find these very hard to assess but actually uh, uh, you know stockfish was just uh, was just winning these so um, it could well be that this was just simply winning um, the way that uh, stockfish was doing it was uh, just maneuvering its pieces uh, somehow um, not taking the exchange like that but coming into the position um, and then afterwards, yeah, we're getting lots of shuffling here, um, lining up with a good old knight takes g5. Um, and uh, yeah, I saw Stockfish doing this so often that I sort of thought, well, maybe this, uh, this position, it's one of those, one of those things that Leela could have in the Sufi, where it's resisting, 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 and then it loses. But maybe it's just lost. But of course, you know, uh, the tactics are just um, rather tricky to, uh, to spot. It's a very nice move, just swapping off the rook. And uh, in that way, getting access to g7 and then the queen's moving over to g5. Or after this move, 
over to b6 in order to uh, to pick the a pawn of course you know you do see a big advantage of having played a5 not ab in those sort of situations that you've got a a, a, a pawn on a6 to target very very uh, interesting um h6 was played by uh, halo and here it, it really collapsed completely uh, playing h5 but the position was uh, you know was was very very difficult if you go king h7 i go knight ef5 and um uh, yeah um, uh, actually, I didn't really. Uh, <laughs> I should have looked really. I think actually, either G takes F five, um, followed by oops, good lord, followed by um, Rook G six here, um, and attacking H six, or even um, E takes F five, followed by G five. You know, it'll all be uh, all be really powerful here. So, um, but um, yeah, Halo played H five, and now we got Bishop D one. Um, and uh, yeah, this collapsed uh, very, very quickly. You know, the, the big problem uh, of this um, uh, king side is, for example, if you go rook e7, I take, take, I go rook g7, takes, takes, and uh, king g7, I go knight f5 check, and queen coming into h6, and bishop takes h5. It's just completely gone. If you go bishop d1, I go knight takes g4. This was one of my games, uh, Stockfish against Berserk, but, you know, it's just... Uh, too much there's too much happening too much loose here too much power and uh and the game uh, you know ended quite quickly after that so okay i think i'll put hold it there because uh, we've already got to uh, 30 minutes quite a long video but um i mean i hope that's instructive i mean i hope it's instructive in the way that uh, you know engines uh, play these uh, strategical positions i was uh, you know explain how humans do it i think you know you've got three channels possible to use you close one and concentrate on two we saw how uh, Stockfish uh, often did that, you know, switching from uh, um, with a closed center with d4 to d5, switching from uh, attack on the f file to attack on the a file. But we also saw um, uh, Minich just um, playing, uh, you know, a rather different strategy, which is closing two of the channels, center and queen side, and then just focusing on the king side. And um, well, we can see uh, Stockfish, Leela, uh, Berserk from time to time, um, you know, managing to hold this um but um but yeah we can also see a lot of uh, losses happening so you know clearly a very dangerous uh, way of playing all the same even if you think yeah you know it's uh, maybe not the um the very best um what i was very impressed about was um you know all the, these things that uh, the stockfish did to uh, you know willing to change the pawn structure on the king side just to you know reacting to what white does just to keep the white pieces at bay um, not the normal uh, human way of looking at uh, defense, it has to be said. Um, and um, yeah, what I liked very much as well was um, just the way that, um, that Minich actually made progress in this position. And uh, you saw Halo just essentially waiting passively, waiting for stuff to happen. And uh, well, I mean, the, the conclusion really is this, that if you do that long enough, you let the pawn come to G4 and then let the white king get out of the uh, danger area and um um and move to uh um move to the queen side so that the king side pawns are free then you really see that that uh that those two factors you know probably turn this position into uh, a winning position from white and that's why you know you you understand then the uh well actually the depth of the evaluation of the uh of the strongest engines when you know in these types of positions they're looking to change the pawn structure get some additional advantages keep the white pieces at bay and uh again that wasn't um uh that wasn't you know completely clear to me either um in actual fact you know the uh, the idea that um uh that um um that, that white's advantage was uh, um could be cranked up to such a degree you know just if black waited that um that there would be um uh, that there could be real problems for um for uh, uh for black i hadn't quite expected that somehow so again you know very uh, very interesting and uh, yeah also gives you an insight into um yeah into the the, the good parts of, uh, of this sort of strategy so there we are i mean uh, not uh, a game between stockfish and leela you know maybe slightly uh slightly less um, stratospheric engines minich and halogen but still a fantastic game and uh, and again you know playing lots of games with uh, with stockfish against uh, you know uh, other very very strong engines like berserk and coivisto i mean that really gives you uh, an idea you know about uh, 
um, what you should do in the position, what are the strengths and the weaknesses, what are the strategies. And that's way, way more than you'd ever do just by, uh, you know, putting the, uh, <laughs> the engine on and then staring at the screen as it uh, crunches away with greater depth. You know, you just don't get any sort of feeling like, like this. So, um, yeah, I'd really recommend this technique to, uh, to everyone. And uh, if you want to know more about it, then take a look at the book. The Silicon Road to Chess Improvement, which explains all how to do it. And there's also free uh, um, work instructions for how to set up your uh, your engines in your favorite GUI to, uh, to, do, to do that. And uh, yeah, you know, if you enjoyed this, then why not give a like or subscribe to the channel? Help me up to 1300 subscribers. And uh, but otherwise, you know, thanks very much for watching this video. And I hope I will see you at the next one. Thanks very much for watching.